What up, what up? Salvador Brigman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about everything crowdfunding, Kickstarter, Indigo, e-commerce, equity crowdfunding, you name it. And I also try to throw a little bit of inspiration your way, add that inspiration to that diet. So you get a well-rounded diet every time you come to my channel, right? Some good education, some good tips, and we're getting into it right now. Okay. So in order to understand the fees that go into Indiegogo, let's first talk about and kind of go quickly over the Indiegogo platform and then get into the fees. And just to kind of preface this all, there are no costs specifically when it comes to starting an Indiegogo campaign profile. If you just want to get started right now, let's like sign up. They're not going to charge you to be able to do that. It is free to be able to actually create an account on Indiegogo. Super easy to do and something that literally anyone can do. And that's why so many people are launching Indiegogo campaigns. It's just that there's really easy, there's low barriers to entry for doing that. That being said, just because it's easy to create an account doesn't mean that's necessarily easy to get a campaign funded. So I want to look at a couple of different campaigns here just to kind of set the stage. But also, if we're just scrolling down here, you can see the way that the uh, your attention is being di directed to different things. So for example, cool and clever finds, team favorites, essential gear, in demand, uh, all these kind of things, different categories that are out there, um, Indiegogo review. So you can go here and you can get a sense like of the different projects that are launching and some of the cool stuff, whether that's essential camera gear or different other elements, uh, you can see different collections as they call it, which is kind of, I think a take honestly on uh, Kickstarter's collections, which they also have there, which is interesting. I'm actually not sure which one was first at that point in time. Uh, but so for example, 10 cool and clever finds. So these are just like interesting projects that Indiegogo likes or that they find interesting, uh, a cool and clever finds when it comes to different categories and some of the cool new stuff that is out there, whether they've been funded or they're going into in demand. Um, this is something to me that's super interesting. If you want to get an idea of how a really high quality campaign is run. So let's open up this one here in another tab. And let's also go and check out these other ones that I pulled up here. So this is for an album campaign uh, that is currently funding. They have nine hours left to go. This is a flexible funding option. So this is one of the things with Indiegogo, which I'll get into in just a second when it comes to fees and pricing is that there is fixed and there's flexible funding. Flexible funding just means that you can hit or not hit your goal and actually keep the funds that have been raised. Fixed funding means that you must hit or exceed your goal in order to keep the funds that have been raised. So they have a $75,000 goal. If they only raise 25 K, they could keep those funds, right? But with a fixed funding goal, they'd have to hit or exceed 75,000 to be able to keep that money that they have raised. That's the difference between flexible and fixed funding. So one of the things that you'll see really quickly is that there are different perks and rewards on the right. This is obviously what people get in, in, in kind of an exchange for backing a particular reward tier. So maybe they get a CD pre-order of that or a limited edition t-shirt, 400 people claimed that one. They had 700, uh, 273 that claimed the first edition vinyl pre-order or a hoodie. They had 333, nine people, uh, 339 people claim that hoodie, right? So the different perks and rewards on the right and also different uh, description here when it comes to the actual campaign. Now, this is very rare that we see a campaign that is not so image heavy, which leads me to believe that this person has an audience. If you have an audience, you can get away with a lot of different stuff. Very easy to get away with things. And also they've had three campaigns, it looks like here, but I'm not going to go too much into that. Let's also look at far out. This looks like an energy drink, mood enhancing drink. Um, and so far they have 30 days to go. Looks like they also hit their goal. They have a 13 K goal. Um, this again, much more flavorful. In, I mean, I guess pun intended, right? Much more flavorful in terms of the design of the page, a lot more images, a lot more um, artful looking, a lot higher quality looking, but still this is because this person likely does not have an audience, um, if I had to guess. Um, so they also are selling different products here and you can see a lot of these have yet to be claimed, right? So the question is, where's all their funding coming from, right? It could be coming from a secret perk which maybe is responsible for some of their backers. Cause if I'm looking here, the numbers do not add up or people could just be donating and donating to that particular project. If you go here to dusk, this is a app enabled 
electrochromatic smart glasses, sunglasses, app-enabled electrochromatic smart sunglasses. Um, these, again, I would say this is a much more highly designed campaign. Looks really cool. Got some images on the right here. You also got the Indiegogo perks as well, right? Um, you go down here. You have um, some different items here. You have some social proof. So this definitely uh, had a lot of attention when it comes to the marketing of the project and really a good sense of the functionality, the benefits, the gifts, all these different things uh, going into that page. Very different uh, from the other campaign that we were looking at, much more similar to this one, right? Very different from just the album campaign. And this is why I state, I say this so much, man. I tell you, the, the categories are different. Categories are different. The rules for success are different depending on which category that you are launching under. Uh, and the last one we'll go here is we'll just go to this quick e-bike. E-bikes are huge, man. If you got an idea for an e-bike, this is a money-making machine. Like there's so many different great e-bikes uh, that are being launched nowadays. And I think there's a whole electronic movement when it comes to, you know, uh, you know, electronic cars, e-cars, like et cetera. Like it's just huge, electric cars. Um, so this campaign is again, in my opinion, probably going to be a more marketing heavy project. Let's take a look at this and let's load this and we'll see if this meets my expectations here. Uh, while that loads, oh, here we go. So yeah, we got some, uh, social proof, right? Social proof. We got some different rewards here, benefits, uh, getting into some of the functionality here, different cool photos. Um, page continues to go down again my internet's kind of slowing up a little bit here a little bit later in the day but as you can see it definitely meets my expectations of just having higher level higher caliber marketing and that's because they are a physical product and in the design category right so they're obviously going to have that level of marketing um so this is important you know if you are doing an album or a creative project you can get away with a lot of the stuff um, on the lower end. And specifically, I'd say um, you know, it's just a different strategy. If you're doing a physical product, you really need to pay attention to a lot of the stuff that I mentioned in the Kickstarter launch formula, my book at crowdcrux.com slash Kickstarter audio. That's C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X.com slash Kickstarter audio. Go and check out that book, as well as the stuff I talk about in my mastermind which is crowdcrux.com slash mastermind. So many of the techniques that I cover there are super applicable for Indiegogo and really just rocket your campaign to success by following some of the tenants. So now that we've said that, let's get into the fees and pricing and also kind of some of the stuff that um, is more specific here. So why is this important? So again, this is important because there are different elements when it comes to an Indiegogo campaign. So one of them is just the raising the money, right? And it's going to be processed by credit card transaction or online transaction. So you can see here, first of all, the transaction fees for particular countries and transfer fees as it relates here. And this is payment processing fees, right? So there are payment processing fees that come with doing an Indiegogo campaign. In addition, there are platform fees. This is what Indigo charges on top of the credit card processing fees. So this is 5% across all different crowdfunding campaigns, fixed and flexible funding. When they first started, it was different. However, now they charge 5% across all different crowdfunding campaigns. So it's, it's changed over the years, as well as they've had different programs that they phased out at different points in time. So 5% uh, you're going to be charging, and that's the platform fee. And that also includes all the funds that you're raising on that platform. If you launched a Kickstarter campaign, and then you decide to go into Indiegogo in demand, your platform fee is going to be 8%. Let me say that again. If you launched a campaign on Kickstarter or another platform of some kind, and you then go into Indiegogo in demand, your fee is going to be 8%. It's going to be higher. Okay. Now, what does that mean, right? Indiegogo in demand, if you go back to Indigo homepage, is the section where campaigns that have already been funded, they've already been funded, are launching on Indiegogo. Now, why would you do this? Well, you do this to continue the deal, to allow people to continue to raise money um, so that people can continue to take access and to get access and to you know, um, get that really awesome, amazing deal that you are providing them when it comes to crowdfunding. And also on the uh, creator side, it's a great way just to continue your marketing without having to set up a Shopify store or an e-commerce store right away. You can just go from Kickstarter right into Indigo in demand 
or you can go from Indiegogo into Indiegogo in demand as well, or another platform if you wanted to, right? So this is very popular. This is something that I help a lot of my clients with that are looking to do a mega campaign. Um, they always come to me like, Sal, like I'm trying to do this, trying to do that. Well, we want to break that into phases, right? We want to break that into the Kickstarter, the Indiegogo in demand, and we want to have a rock solid strategy for that entire phase of the live phase of the campaign. So if this is something that you'd like a little bit more information on, you can always book a coaching call with me at crowdcrux.com slash coaching. That's C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X.com slash coaching. Or if you just want to get straight access to my team, like you're ready to just get some help setting up one of these really cool looking pages that you see here that we were going over today, you can also go to crowdcrux.com slash help. You can enter a little bit of information there and we may or may not uh, be able to work with you based on your application and based on your product type. Um, so that's it might take a little bit more time. Coaching calls, um, you know, are obviously super intensive and something that I take very seriously to help my clients get results in as fast a time as possible. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrate is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillright today. Link in the description. Now, aside from this pricing, right, and you can go here to uh, the pricing link, um, it, you know, when it comes to this, if you do not meet your goal with a fixed funding campaign, let's just say that you have a $20,000 goal and you don't hit your goal, there are no, there are going to be no processing fees. There are going to be no fees because the backers are going to be refunded after the end of that campaign. And that's the whole point behind fixed funding campaigns is that if they're only going to move forward, if you hit or exceed that funding goal. Now, there are some other different things like wire fees, etc. Uh, that you can read about here, currency conversion, I'm gonna not you know, go too much into that. But I think that answers when it comes to just like, the pricing and the cost for running an Indigo campaign, if you're doing it yourself, right? What are some of the other costs that you might want to think about? Well, Let's go back to far out here. So these guys ran a, a running a campaign. They have 43 backers. They have 13 K that they've raised. Awesome. Incredible. Amazing. Right. I think that's really commendable. And I think that also to just put yourself out there in general is super cool and super important. Same thing when it goes to <clears throat> e-bikes, right? So like this isn't in demand right now, right? What is the difference between a $800,000 campaign and a $14,000 campaign? Well, it's definitely going to be part of their marketing, the time that they put into that, their pre-launch community, how they're running, any kind of paid advertising campaigns that they're doing, what they're doing in the way of organic marketing. So if you have a goal, an ambitious goal, and by ambitious, I mean, you know, 100K to 300K, if you have anything uh, above 50K, it's usually going to pay dividends for you to invest in marketing help. Um, now, that's going to vary from person to person. Or you can literally do this all yourself, but then you have to make aware or make yourself aware of the time that you're going to be putting into that. So you have in business, you have two things. You got money and you got time. And both of them have a price tag, right? So money is what your budget is for this particular campaign. Time is you not being able to do other things or having to learn certain key skill sets. And it pushes out things for potentially years until you're able to do something. So you want to identify for you, the level of campaign that you're trying to do. You want to identify the category of campaign that you're looking to launch, right? And there are so many different ones, right? So like I mentioned, if you're doing like an album or a board game, it's going to look very different, the strategy, than if you're doing an e-bike or a beverage project or something related to design and technology. It's going to look very different. So you want to identify, number one, what are your goals? Number two, what type of category are you going to be launching in? What does success look like to you? And looking through some of these other projects, what is required for you to obtain success or to even get, we'll just say to 70% of where you're trying to get to, what is required? Do you need a super banging, amazing video, right? Do you need help when it comes to building up a tribe before you go live, an audience of people? Do you need help when it comes to PR and outreach there? What is required for you to be successful? I want you to really think about that and to begin to consider that because that's really where, to me, the costs come in when it comes to Indiegogo is like your time, 
How long does it take you to acquire those assets? How are you going to do that? And that's where um, the real work begins, in my opinion. So that being said, I hope that you enjoyed this video when it comes to the fees and pricing. So, you know, my answer obviously there being 5% plus credit card processing, 8% if it's coming from in demand. I hope that you found this to be useful. There are tons of articles out there that go over this as well. But I think the best thing is just to go to the Indiegogo page and to see the most updated pricing there does not cost you anything to get started. The only thing that it costs is you got to put a little bit of your gut into it. You know, you got to leap over that major barrier and be willing to get started. And that's always a little bit difficult, I think, is to just confront that a thousand pound gorilla, which is fear. But I know you can do it and all these other people are doing it as well. And you can look up to them for inspiration. So go and tune into the podcast. Hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you next time.